So faux pas, yes. I, I, I don't know if I would ever call them faux pas, but I think that we see a lot of companies come through. Um, you know, they send unsolicited pitches uh, over email. Um, they have actually sort of shown up on the uninvited at our offices. And uh, of course, we, you know, based on the filtering, we bring in a, a smaller percentage of, of, of that group to, to meet. So if I had to sort of pick the, the faux pas, uh, this is actually a, a blog post that I'm actually writing. So you know, hopefully we'll get a little bit more, a little sharper on the thinking. But the, the number one thing I always like to ask is this, is this entrepreneur, does this entrepreneur have the conviction uh, for, for this journey? And, uh, and that's usually the biggest one because a lot of the time you realize once you poke and prod that they don't. So that's one. Another that keeps coming up is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a function of one of my favorite sayings by Charlie Munger, who is Warren Buffett's partner. And he, he likes to ask this question, which is essentially, have you done the work required to form an opinion? And I kind of shaped that into sort of really asking these entrepreneurs, how much thought has gone into this entire process, this vision, this plan, this product? And that's another big faux pas. Because one of the things that I cannot stand, and it's been a personal sort of pet peeve of mine for, for years, is you come in and you're supposed to teach me about the space, about the opportunity. And if I know it better than you, that's a problem, and we see that a lot. Uh, a third faux pas uh, certainly is, is, is entrepreneurs who don't understand the value of, of, of having a team. And you know, I, that's not to say that we won't invest in a solo founder. We have, we'll continue to. But a solo founder is not the same thing, it's not the same thing as a single person team. And so we see them come in and they have that sort of optimism that no, no, don't worry, once you give me this money I'm looking for, I will go build a team. And you know, it goes back to sort of the first point about conviction. If you, if you, you have to have conviction, but you also have, the, you also have to have the skill set and ability to share it and infect people with it. And those are the people that have to come, come with you along, you know, along the journey. So you know, basically I could go on and on about these faux pas, uh, but, but those, those are things that uh, come up. And we, you know, we, we tend to forgive a lot of others because we've seen a lot of deals and you know, one of the things you do certainly at the seed and early stage is you learn to, to understand that a lot of the very best entrepreneurs are very poor storytellers. And so you learn to sort of recast what it is they're saying to get a really good sense of where the opportunity is. And then, of course, you've seen some fantastic storytellers who are incredibly poor entrepreneurs. So knowing, knowing, knowing enough to be able to tell the difference is a very key part of what we do. And so that storytelling, you know, being able to sort of capture the right narrative, being able to share it, being able to get people excited, um, you know, I think a lot of entrepreneurs are basically unprepared when they go out to raise money, that they don't seem to prioritize it. That's very important. We've never actually done a deal where it was always perfect. Because if it was, everybody else would have done it. So I think what we've done is we've been able to zero in on the strong signal that maybe has been obscured by other things, right? So maybe it's a poor storytelling narrative. Uh, maybe, you know, there's not enough in quotes, traction, um, but we've done investments, you know, where there's very little traction, um, but you're measuring other things. You're measuring entrepreneur conviction. You're measuring product market fit. You're measuring entrepreneur product market fit and entrepreneur market product fit. So you're looking at all those things and you're saying, you know, the signals are very strong, but some of the other measures like revenue and the, and, and the, and the rest aren't as strong, but that's why you want to have an investor that shares your conviction, because they're willing to go in even when it looks rough. That's how you sort of make money in venture. You do 
you take a non-consensus view on a mispriced security. So I think, I've been asked this question once, and I think if I had to pick the, the, the single most important sort of difference, it would be the absolute resiliency of the African entrepreneur. Uh, and, and I think a lot of it is really because in the US or in the Valley, um, a lot of folks have options, right? And so what you then find is it's, you know, when things get really, really rough, you know, only the best, best or only the very best entrepreneurs um, there are able to sort of power through. Whereas here, the standard context, you, you know, tends to be in retrograde. So what happens is when you're operating in a retrograde system, right, you have to bring on and call on different skills. And, you know, and, you know, the conviction is sort of to the nth power. Everything is to the nth power because you're swimming upstream in every, every, every sort of context. So what we find is that these entrepreneurs understand how to navigate systems that are full of friction everywhere. And that's just the difference. Right? And it's, it's incredible. And I, I made a joke once, someone interviewed me and asked me about that. And I said, you know, the difference in an African entrepreneur and a Valley entrepreneur is, if we took these African entrepreneurs to the Valley, they might actually not succeed. Because they wouldn't know what to do when they realized that things were easy. Like, wait, I can incorporate a company from my laptop? where I don't have to make three trips to Abuja? I don't have to do small sharing? How? You know, wait, I don't have to buy a generator <laughs> or two? It, it, it'll confuse them. <laughs> so, so, so I think that's, that's the key thing, yeah, is that, is that resiliency and the you know, ability to swim upstream when, 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 when uh, you know, it, it seems just really impossible. The investor is going to give you money. He's not going to give you money if he or she thinks that this is a side hustle, right? And the problem is that the, 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 the ecosystem we're in, you know, doesn't really allow you to focus because no single thing is going to sort of help support you. So you have to stack these side hustles. And so that's a challenge, right? And investors sort of have these requirements and the reality sort of demand something different, right? So there's that. Of course, there's a storytelling narrative skill, skill, skill that's missing in action. That's another thing. Um, and then there's also sort of the broken trust, right? That's a, a big part of this ecosystem, you know, where it doesn't exist or it exists in sort of very, sort of really sort of an atomized form. So it's really difficult to be able to get past that. You know, I, I hear, you know, investment evaluation processes that go on for two years. I don't understand that. Um, but that's, a, that's, a, that's really a function of the, of, the, of the lack of trust in the system. So it's not that people don't get funded. You know, it just takes a long, long time to do that. And that's, that's really hard because you, know, you can't test some of these products and services without you know, getting some funding. So there, there, there's a challenge. And then, of course, you know, there's that whole thing again, which is have you done the work required to form an opinion? I think the first thing I would, I would, I would say to myself, or, you know, like, hey, I go, so you're going to pitch Ecovisa, what do you need to know? One, know your market. A high fidelity understanding of your market, of your product, and how your product serves that market is absolutely crucial. The numbers are not as important because we do see it in the early stage. We are willing to take the risk with you. But know that that high fidelity understanding is essentially something that would not, I will not allow anyone to compromise. The second thing is know what you don't know. You know, there's no bluster. If you don't know, it's okay to admit it and say, you know, I'm going to go find out. That's another thing that I think you're coming in. Just, you know, be transparent about what you know and what you don't know and be willing to sort of go acquire the knowledge. And the third thing is be patient. You know, you're going to ask for money. No one's going to give you the check right off the bat. There's going to be a process. Stay engaged with the process. If this is important to you, understand that. Even a no can turn into a yes later. You know, so stay engaged with the process. Don't get pissed. Don't take it personal. Um, but just work with it because you have to look at the interaction as a learning experience for the both of you. Mm -hmm.